welcome, 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 everybody. This is the Siphon and Chat in association with the Denku Podcast. I'm your host, Tayamu Denku. Shout out to my homie Pestilence. He may pop in a little later. But tonight, special guest, my homie all the way out in North Dakota. Part of the Zen people. That's still a, that's still a crew, right? Yeah. Part of the Zen oh, people. Yeah. My homie Jansonia in the building. What is going on? What's up, world? This is Jansonia coming at you from Fargo, North Dakota. What's a good? We're going to talk about some things. I just got a... Educated on Zoom real fast, so I'm rocking all this out, <laughs> and I'm I'm glad I got to finally <laughs> figure it out. I remember doing I did a meeting like a year and a half ago with some company, and they needed me to do the same situation, and so I was just trying to like make a make a login, and they're like, "You have a profile, settle down." <laughs> I feel that I feel that. Um, yeah, I mean, when I first started podcasting, I had to figure out shit. We um. I got pretty good at it pretty fast. But yeah, it seems like you got the uh, distributor thing down that a lot of people haven't really figured out yet. So that's pretty tight. Yeah, and then, um, you know, the editing process is not really... T- I mean, we don't... I don't edit much. I let everything just free flow and go. Like, I don't really... I have an intro, outro, logo, shit like that. And then when I do the clips, I usually uh, do a little extra... You know what I'm saying? Like uh, images and shit like that, whatever. But yeah, man, uh, you got a new album out. Yes, sir. I dropped uh, When in Doubt on September 10th. And then I've been running a little tour with it. I got to uh, finish it up this weekend with Minneapolis and Fargo. That's what's up, man. And uh, and you're going to be making a stop out here, right? Are you still planning on doing that, that Oshkosh joint? Yeah, I'll be out there. I think it's... What was it, November 2nd? 2nd, yes. I did get it right. Yeah, November 2nd. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, I could hit him up and see what's up, but what would you... Uh, I mean, it's probably too last minute, to be honest, because they book up kind of quick, but you know what would be dope is if we did uh, Dubuque and then Oshkosh. I mean, I'd love I'd love to do Dubuque. I've always tried to go there i went to a soccer tournament there when i was in like eighth grade and i was like i need to come back here this is one of the cooler places i've been in my life and i have always tried to get shows there but i never successfully have is it case is that the dude's name yeah case i mean he don't he does he don't do shit that much anymore i know the dude that directly owns the lift the thing is that place is pro i feel like that place is probably booked especially for a friday I could try to hit him now. I do know a couple other people out there that I could hit and maybe see if we can make something work, but I think it would be better if we did Dubuque and then Oshkosh. I mean, the Oshkosh show is yeah. going to be dope regardless. Um, yeah, it's still kind of Halloween weekend, so I can wear an outfit for it. <laughs> I got two two yeah. Halloween bookings, and then, well, this will be the third one, so try to get that going. I got Fargo where I'm hosting some strange music guys coming in and then I'm opening up for Ritz in Minot on the 28th of October. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping to just add more stuff to that so I can have like a little a little route made out of it. Yeah, I've only played Minot that one time that we played. Yeah, we hooped for like three hours that day. That was intense. <laughs> I can't even believe that that fucking happened. That was crazy. <laughs> and And you know what else I remember from that? So like we hooped for three hours. And then we fucking did the show. And I remember coming back and I just remember randomly waking up in and out of sleep at uh at Dakota's. Yeah. With fucking Brickleberry coming on. I just I just heard Brickleberry all <laughs> night long. It just kept coming that, on. That was like the only time I ever watched that show. <laughs> I that's that made me watch it. Like I own that entire series. It's only it was only on for three three seasons, but yeah, it didn't last that long. That was like the uh, they're like park rangers, aren't they, or something? Yeah, it's fucking yeah. hilarious. That that was uh, and Daniel Tosh was a little bear and shit. Oh yeah, that's his show or part of his show. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Well, it's Waco and Gun's show. Those are the two dudes. That's their last names. Uh, but they also went on to do 
um, Paradise PD, which is one of the most fucked up R-rated animated shows I've ever seen in my whole life. That was what came after Brickleberry. Brickleberry was borderline like, holy fuck, what's going on? But they edited yeah. a little shit. Paradise PD don't edit nothing. I'm talking about all the language, all the sex, all the fucked up shit, blood, all the shit you could possibly think of being fucked up in an animated show <laughs> is in that show. And then they went on to make a sci-fi show. But what had happened was, and I can't even think of his name, so I'm not even going to attempt to try to think of who it is, but the main actor of the show uh, ended up passing away in real life, so it never went on to a season two. Ah. It, was like a, it was like a sci-fi show that they did, and then that's the last one that they made. I don't know if they're coming out with something new or whatever, but yeah, I remember that, man. I remember that whole shit, and, uh, and that was fun. I, I actually remember there was random people there that were from Milwaukee that I... Yeah, they, ran. like, knew... They, like, knew you and whatnot. I was like, damn. Or they knew something about, like, something hella local involved with you. Like, they were from your neighborhood and shit. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. I remember uh, one that, time when we were on the road and we stayed at your crib, um, it was uh, the big tour with, with Manifesto, but, like, we ended up going to a garage sale, like, a couple houses down from you. And we, we like went to buy stuff, but the people were never there. They, they We were there for like 25 minutes and they never came out or they just weren't there. And it was clear that they had a garage sale going on. So we just left money there and we bought their like toy little radar gun or something. I don't know what it was, but it was creepy as hell. <laughs> that's, that's actually, that's hilarious. I feel um, like I was being set up to this day. Actually, I feel weird saying it out loud that we did that. <laughs> We took a picture with the dude's pitchfork, I remember. That and then sounds crazy. Manifesto kept saying, my Amish wife. And that's like whenever he was holding the pitchfork. So that, was picture after, out there. so that was after we recorded that joint? Because we recorded that joint here, right? Yeah, yeah. We That was like the day after in like, I don't know. We like went somewhere quick to get like a coffee or something like lunchtime-ish. And we were on the way back and just saw that there was a garage sale available. And there was a lot of stuff out there, but yeah, no, no humans were out there. Yeah. I paid for whatever I paid for, though. I just put like five bucks on the little counter for the tiny toy gun that we had because we were going to shoot a video with whatever accessories we were going to end up with. I actually oh. love the I love the promo that you guys did. I think it was that one. I love the promo that you guys did for that tour, like when you did random promos for it. I yeah, remember one. Was... In, I remember one in particular, like kept circling around you guys or whatever or some shit from yeah. what I think like I I, well, I I just remember all the promos were cold like I it was dope we had one where we would like we just pretended that sh that show dates were like hidden and stuff so I like mm -hmm. picked up a rock and I was like there's a show date under this rock there's a show date under my hat and Wyatt who was on the tour with us bringing a photographer on a tour is just the move forever after doing what we did with homie but like he just set it up where he just put little show dates inside of the crevices that we were like talking about. And it made it hilarious and really fast and easy to make those little quick things are when you got a team like that, it makes things a lot easier, but it's hard to get the inspiration to actually like go through with something like that. Cause it ain't, it ain't writing a verse. It's a completely different game. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I guess uh pestilence is coming in here. Let me bring them in real quick. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh Jesus, bro! Did you paint the mask? What is going on there? I painted the mask. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up? Yeah, 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 man. Keyword I keyword I painted it, so it's not done very well. <laughs> so, uh. So what was the idea behind putting out this uh this newest record you dropped? Uh the so overall uh, like cuz cuz you had you had when we had a brief conversation um about it and you said it was more so uh a lot more collaborations. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was 
just always i mean songs come out all the time and like i have a grip of a hundred i mean i'd be rapping i don't know and so i found the context of just like the new age wave with all the features that i had and i I just selected it off and i was like this is gonna be one where i'm gonna do it this way and this next one i've kind of got the answer to myself in the last week because i keep adding up songs but this next one is going to be like different from that and i'm glad that i sectioned it the way that i did because it's kind of like telling me what to do after i sectioned it off correctly one thing i feel weird about is working and on four albums at one time because it kind of like takes the soul out of it but then you just got to selectively work on that one project till you end up loving it so that's where i really got to with like working on this one and i we found a creative fun way to emphasize 808 is <laughs> kind of what i've realized on this and it's it's not my overall lane but that's that's tight i'm glad i did it because of that and i could do that lane if i wanted to but i didn't and <laughs> just for that one and i wanted to do uh i wanted to bite a ubi strip i don't know if you know what that is but like for the cover the japanese like vinyl stripping that they do to like certify music i don't know i did that for the cover oh, I and i was pumped that i pulled that one off and then i get a cypher track on there which is very different from like the rest of the album but i'm glad i got to put that one down that's kind of what got the ball rolling on the whole album itself i was like hmm. i gotta put this cypher track somewhere and then it just kept building after that that's what's up man. um yeah it was a it was fun i'm glad i got i'm glad i put a tour to it it put a lot more purpose into the into the album itself but oh, for course. fargo it's a lot of fargo cats on it so for fargo people it's kind of it's fun to listen to i'm not from here still so <laughs> it's like i made an album for the people of this town for the moment yeah how do you think those last two shows are gonna run i think well i'm opening up for uh moon hooch which is like a jazz fusion jazz fusion saxophone like drummer thing they're crazy. They went viral for like this jam thing in a porter potty a long time ago. They're pretty, they're pretty known. I don't know, but I'm, that's going to be a big show. That's going to be in Fargo, but this Minneapolis one is in a venue that's like never even had a show before. I just kind of made it work, but I have Mike the Martyr joining me, which I consider him a legend out of Minneapolis. So I'm, I'm pumped. I got to make that happen. Um, I think that one's going to do all right. I'm going to be pulling up a day early and hanging out with, uh, Sean who for a while I'm taking his sound to do the show so it's it'll work out fine oh yeah that's um, right I forgot he moved out there yeah he'd be the he's DJing for Timberwolves Lynx the MLS team and uh, the twins like consistently and it's it's badass it's really dope <laughs> that's dope um, that and, like the skill on the tables is like also getting nuts but I feel like people are looking at like the things he's pulling off like yeah but i'm looking at him with the board actually pulling the scratches off and i'm like but this is the heat this is stuff that you've never done before so i'm pumped in both directions can be tight yeah speaking of sean who he's also part of the zen people so when i first had met you you guys were on a run as the zen as the zen people that's where i met all y'all um so Tell me the start of you rhyming and how the Zen people formed and how you became part of that. Um, Zen people kind of formed. I'd probably say it was, it was me who created it first Mm. out of my lane of homies and grand forks. Um, we kind of were doing our thing and then we realized that we were all rapping in the same lane and just kind of linked with each other. It wasn't like a day where it was like, we're all in it now, but it was kind of just a slow grind in that direction. We made like a collab tape around that time. I mean, this was around, I was around like 19 when all that stuff happened. I'm I'm 31 now. Um, We were all just, uh, Cold Sweat was at UND. Sean was still living in the area and we were all just kind of spitting on our own ways. But like we all knew what we were doing in the in the sense of it was going to be like a collaborative, like label type of thing. But it's not like a rap group. Like we're all solo, but we tour differently with our own solo stuff. 
Yeah, that's kind of what Cypher then is too. It's kind of how it is. Yeah, yeah. And once that realization gets locked in, it, it was it was nice. It was it was a dope. It's crazy how like much we I think about just a two week run that happened almost ten years ago. <laughs> like and how much it, that two week run one time changed my whole like existence. I've done. 35 more runs since then and i don't like think about the impact that it had like the other one did when we, we did it like that it's not like anything crazy really happened well i met you and all that fun stuff so that like, so that was the first official tour then that i met you no um 2014 i went with just cold just me and cold sweat artist wise um okay. we went around uh we did like probably 12 shows the West Coast, and we ended in Denver, and then we opened up for Blueprint in Minot to end it. And it was like a whole with like Boise, Montana, or Missoula. There was a Seattle. No, we went to Seattle, but we didn't play there. We played Hood River, Oregon, Portland, played that Boise show, and then Denver. Yeah, I don't know. 2014 White Suburban Tour was the first one. Hmm. Now, I've never done a West Coast tour. I still have yet to do one. Yeah, it kind of seemed like the uh, the Washington. Yeah, we played Spokane too. The Washington, like um, Portland, Oregon area, is like an easier way to get things going. But booking in all the other spots is kind of difficult, in my opinion. Hood River, Oregon, was dope. We had a blast there. I've never uh, never rapped on a stage in California at all, though. I've been there so many times for rap related like things but i've never went there to rap on a stage i've done videos and all the other fun stuff hmm. i'd love to do such a thing yeah i Thanks. i uh i remember talking to um the last show i did with a wall a wall one uh shouts to him yeah uh last show i did with him he basically told me he was well he actually literally after that show happened in milwaukee he was like hey man um, I know it's kind of spur of the moment, but you want to just roll with, with me to Chicago and play this show with me and cool Keith. And I'm like, <laughs> you can't just throw that out. Like, I, like I can't do it. And now I feel fucked up because I wanted to do it, but yeah. Um, but then he was like, well, anytime you play the West coast, I could probably book a run for you or help you book a run. And I just haven't taken advantage of it yet, but AWOL 1 is responsible for the collab Kong um, graphic artwork. Uh, yeah. He did he did that. He did the collab Zilla artwork. He did the Hip Hop or Death artwork for me. And uh, Where is he one, based out of? Uh, LA. Where? And there's one more um, art piece that he did for me that I haven't released to anybody yet. So, uh, nice. which is which is dope. It'll come out at some point in time. I'm I've actually uh, vaulted not just music, which I have a lot of that vaulted too that I haven't put out that's just done sitting in my archives of shit. Uh, but I vaulted art. Like I have a lot of art that's done and ready to go whenever I want to pull the trigger on it. You know what I'm saying? Like for yeah. whether it's shirt designs or album I designs. Up, I ended up in a, or in, a, in a studio last night and I ended up meeting a, Speaking of art, I ended up meeting just like a graffiti legend in my conscience, at least like with me looking at the walls, I had met the dude that I was like kind of a fan of just staring at. And I didn't know it was him until I got there. I was like, oh, shit. And mm. he ended up giving me like a a nice canvas piece. And he's like, as long as you uh, tell everybody you buy it for a thousand dollars, that's yours. And I was like, fuck, yeah. So, yeah, he gave me this like nice piece. And I was super pumped meeting graffiti legends. Or just immediately right immediately here. broke the agreement you made with that man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you lasted one day. No, I gave him I gave him two racks. I gave him two racks for <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You are completely right. He'll never see this. So. <laughs> I said it'll oh, come shit. around the back. But yeah, he was like super thankful that I even gave a fuck. But I I, I always kind of am like lightly stepping when I've ended up in situations like that. Cause I've had other graffiti cats that are like, yeah, you know, but shut the fuck up <laughs> like all the way through. And it was kind of interesting. He was cool with it though. He was pumped. He was pumped that I cared. 
that's dope. Um, speaking of graffiti, you guys got that public, uh, that public alleyway that always yeah, gets yeah. done up. Um, speak on that. Like, is there like, can you speak on the history of that? I mean, I think it was just kind of, I, I don't know when it started, but I, it's been around ever since I think like over 10 years now. Um, but it's like, it, it's like a legal wall, right? Like, like yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like Venice beach, like just a big, legal block but it's it's a lot of space though so it's cool like how much options there are um cameras on it from what i understand i think the the cats that like are not from here they hit it with time and they hit it as like i'm tourist and i'm here to put shit down on this wall but when it comes to the cats really doing shit out here they don't even go down that alley <laughs> they just like are masked up all the way through it there's like nah, we don't fucking touch that thing which is I which is kind of tight because it separates it nicely between like the two sections of what we're looking at. Like there's no beefing going on on that wall most of the time. Yeah. Some te- some people do flex, but when they do, it's like they understand that they're there for the picture and then they're out type shit. Is there is there a lot of graffiti spots like in Fargo? I mean, I know you're from Grand Forks, but is there like and is there from- is there graffiti spots in Grand Forks? Because I I didn't explore Grand Forks like that. No, nah, there's the... there's not really much of anything. There's been a couple things that have erupted. There's times where I think like I don't know much, but then I think about it and I'm like, I know more than anyone else. This is like I am obsessed with staring at every vent and like little crevice and tunnel throughout the city. So like, there's a thing on the south side that's kind of popping off a little bit, but it's like it's nothing compared to what happens here in Fargo. There's a little scene like there. It's a scene though. It's like a, only a few cats. There's not much like legendary shit going on between like a, only a few people. I don't know. <laughs> like uh, there's a couple crevices along the train line that actually have like a couple legendary spots. Um, it's mostly down the main train line. And then there's probably a couple more spots that I'm unaware of, but like, those ones are pretty solid. Like you can actually spend some time looking at the art on the walls and shit that. And like, I've realized downtown as like an art district. Um, like have you ever been to Cincinnati? Many times. You know how like just lit that little neighborhood is with the art. Like there's something about it. That's just like every building has like a giant piece. That's like established for that. You're talking about in, start- the, in like the art district area, right? I think talking. it would be, yeah, I don't know really where I was, but I think it was in the art district. It seems like Fargo's kind of starting to do that, and I'm very proud of that, because what the first time I went mm-hmm. to Cincinnati, I was like, I've never seen it like this. Like, yes, I've seen graffiti, but this is like whole in-depth art pieces everywhere, and I am I think that's dope. It adds culture to the whole thing. Yeah. I, um, like I said, I, I mean, we, we stopped and we checked out the wall uh that wall area um it's yeah. dope it's dope hearing that there's a, actually a graffiti scene out there um i mean there's always graffiti shit around milwaukee i just don't know the people that are fully involved really like i yeah. i never i never really got involved in that entire lane of shit but i have i mean i mean i used to do some some tag shit way back um there was times where, like, I'll see cats sometimes that, like, they'll have that mind state that I had when I was in, when I was a sophomore in high school. Like, where it's just like, I don't think about anything else but that. And I kind of loved it when I was in that. I was in it pretty deep, and it was fun. <laughs> and I'm kind of glad I'm out of it, though, because I felt crazy around that time. <laughs> well, you also now, you, um, you're like a studio engineer now. You took me through that that super dope fucking studio yeah. out there in Fargo. So talk about uh, talk about learning to be a studio engineer and getting brought into that super dope studio. Yeah, so I'm yeah I'll be a audio engineer at SpacePod Studios in West Fargo at the moment. Um, I kind of just has been I've been recording obviously in the spitting bars for like since. 2012 and recording myself mostly the whole time got 
Logic in like 2015. And I so I almost got like 10 years of pressing buttons on the same type of screen. <laughs> Um, about last year, a producer, well, Chase the Money, pretty known Grammy winning producer came in and was working there that night. And I ended up asking for a job that night. And now I take just the crazy night shifts most of the time. And, uh, yeah, I just be pressing record for people all the time and it's tight. And I'd be making beats and recording there as well. And it's just a good spot to be a nice hub where I can actually like build with people legitly and it looks solid i was rocking uh sessions out of my crib in grand forks for like two years before that and mm. shit was just it was tight i had a blast i learned a lot by myself but it also was like i'm bringing hood ass dudes into my house so it's like that weird type of balance you gotta find yeah and, that's see bro before you continue that's what kind of made me stop mm-hmm. um engineering for other people i mean i'll do like mixes and masters for people yeah but as far as recording people i don't do that shit no more yeah that and like i've i was really lenient just because like oh i just want to learn and yes i did learn a lot because i was so lenient on producing whole projects for cats but like i probably won't do that again (laughs) i feel you at the end of the day it's just not the move unless unless it like right off the jump everything is figured out on my end but like doing it out of love is like a weird move with because i know what the outcome is most of the time now and i've seen it too many times so it's just it sucks but it's that's what older me has to deal with now i'm glad i went through with it but it's just not as locked in as it should be (laughs) yeah yeah man uh pesto you got something on that on that i mean i i mean i kind of agree in a sense but also like back to what you had mentioned earlier about having like a crew of solid cats. I know like Cypher Den's one crew, um, you know, like me and Denku do a lot of stuff together. Ram and Urban. Ur- yeah. Ram's been doing the, the comedy tip for a little while and Urban's been kind of stepped away from the music for a little while. So it's just been me and Denku kind of pushing, but like having people that you, you know, like you already know the person, you guys are down with each other and stuff like that. It makes it a lot easier to have those kinds of relationships. Cause like, I have the same thing with like Two-Face Media fam, like Space Case, Lobotomized yeah. Geniuses, who I think you might've met yeah, at yeah. the last show that you guys did, uh, or the last run you guys did. Um, and then actually another homie, Mars One is our other MC. And the other thing I have to mention, I would be remiss if I didn't say this, you guys look way too similar to not bring it up you and mars one look fucking <laughs> oh shit i didn't even think about that. crazy or like it. it's fucking weird like down to like wearing the hat same glasses same do facial hair do y'all know uh freddie dread i think i might have brought this up when you were in town danku but like i was at a gas station the other day this dude just came up to me he's like what's up freddie dread and then i looked up this freddie dread dude who would be rapping out of memphis i guess and me you or me him and that guy look we got to just make our own little like team. <laughs> yeah, I look it, exactly like that cat. I, 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 saw, could... uh, I saw you rapping when he posted the recap last time. Yeah. And I, I, I sent it to Mars right away. I was like, bro, what the fuck? This looks <laughs> just like you. The way that you, you stand and your like your motions while you're rapping is the same as his too. It's like just enunciations an archetype of person, you know, like <laughs> John, it's, uh, Sean Anonymous played this weekend here. I don't know if y'all know him, but like yeah, the him. homies kept coming up to me. They're just like, it's your big brother, bro. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> I look just like dude. I should just label what this is. White dude with beard with like straight hat that raps like a snare drum type shit. <laughs> Does dude rap kind of like hibbity dibbity fast? Like No, no. Mar- no he doesn't like, do that. He's like self no, no. Okay, we're like self-titled. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, um, but yeah, no, I think that because it's actually interesting because Space Case, he all, he does a lot of engineering stuff. He does production. Um he 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 retired from emceeing for like a year, but then he came back and he's been doing mad projects again. But he just did a drum and bass show where he DJed there and he said That's- when he got there, they gave him the offer to like do an extended set, which he was like, Hell yeah. Because a bunch of other people that were supposed to play the show showed up, saw that there weren't like a ton of people there and then just dipped out. Um, And he was kind of just talking about how like, 
you know, how, how blessed he is to have the kind of cruel people that he surrounds himself around where it's like, we're all in it for the same thing. You know, it's all about the artistry. It's all about like making something that sounds dope, you know, and, and doing yeah. that kind of stuff. And we, we've been very, very lucky to just kind of have a group of people that get together well. And it's the same thing with like me and Denku where it's like, you fill in where you're needed, you know? And it's like, yeah, when me and Denku did the project, it was like, I found, you know, we had all these beats. I sent him a bunch of the beats. He's like, hell yeah, I fuck with all of these. And we just kind of put them in a folder and like, just when either of us had time, we would just pick it one and be like, yo, I got a ref. I got a ref, you know? And then yeah. it just ended up leading to a very well balanced and, and weird project. But it's like that, I think only works if you have rapport with the person. I think it's very rare to be able to just do that with somebody else that you don't know you don't have like a firm grounding on like the first project i ever dropped like um i dropped it with a producer his name's boom tech and he's really really fucking dope with the beats um cool dude but like he lives in um finland now so it was like it was mad hard to like get everything set and solid on both sides because like we both live in different worlds and we don't know yeah. each other like that so it was it was a it was a weird thing so it's like i definitely can understand where you're coming from with saying like you don't just want to work with anybody and i've heard fucking horror stories from denku about yeah. various people of like yeah you know this motherfucker you know like i'll bring somebody up to him he's like oh yeah that dude and then he'll tell me a story about that dude and i'm like god damn what the fuck like yeah there's a one lot of, my of people favorite ones, trifling. One of my favorite ones recently was a client was like, I shouldn't even be paying y'all. Y'all are going to be famous after working with me. <laughs> oh, shit. That one just hurt to <laughs> try to explain to him, like, no, oh, God, you have to pay me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've that's had a couple another of thing that's interesting, ones. too, because, like, I feel like, Obviously, the accessibility of technology has made it so that way more of us are able to do this than ever before. Yeah. You know, there's not just like one or two studios in a fucking state where you can go and fucking record and you got all these people lining up. It's a very accessible yeah. craft now, which also yeah. means like there's a lot and a lot of people talk about there's a lot more garbage out there and there definitely is. But there's way more like people making incredible music than ever before. It's yeah, way yeah. more competitive than it's ever been because like people are just getting better and better at it. There's people that spit crazy dope bars so like the sesame street fucking rappers are falling by the wayside in the especially yeah, yeah. that scene because it's like man if you ain't fucking lyrical you ain't gonna survive in that mm -hmm. that realm you gotta get into the fucking club scene or something and find a, a different niche because you ain't gonna make it yeah, yeah. Um, trying to spit that that's why i try to make myself feel better and i'm like what they live said about then though <laughs> just after i see <laughs> an incredible like audio track from from somebody that's just like ripping it but they don't have any shows that's where i talk my shit i'm like oh well you gotta be on stage but then you'll see a full circle artist and it's like okay this dude's got the full juice to take this world over but they come but like breaking it down to try to find like a super artist like that or someone who was actually got their shit together it's kind of rare when you break it down like that like yes oh, people absolutely. are got their 30 band lab songs but they're not doing the other 17 things you got to do in the game it is. It's really like it, it's I compare it often to like an RPG video game, like a fucking Elden Ring. you got to spec your character out. You can't just yeah, like yeah. have a 99 in studio and a zero in fucking live <laughs> live show performance, a zero yeah, right. in networking, a zero in fucking charisma. Like it's 12 in like, stamina. Yeah, yeah but, you just can't do it. But the thing about the thing about this is, do you think it has to do with. Someone being successful that has all those things. Do you think it has to do with location? Because I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I mean, I feel like all three of our work ethics is on the level. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, but like, I live in Milwaukee. Pestilence lives in Green Bay. You live in Fargo. If we were somewhere and, and but with the same work ethic that we have, if we were somewhere like L.A., New York, even though it's more saturated with rappers, but all those rappers that it's saturated with don't have the work ethic. So you put somebody, you put people like us that have this crazy work ethic in any of those locations, I think it changes. I think location, 
Re regardless yeah. of people being able to do all this shit online and get viral or popping or whatever the fuck they do now, um, the full package thing uh, built around professional individuals and hardworking people, uh, I think location is thing. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, I mean, I would consider Minneapolis being one of those bigger hubs. And like, there's a, there's a homie that was coming up back in uh, a few years ago. He, uh, this just reminded me of that. But like, you know how comedies, comedy cats in New York be doing like six shows a night type shit. Like they'd be going, taking their cab, going blah blah blah. Specific homie ended up having like, I think it was four shows in one evening, and he just like had one uber and he's like stay here i'm gonna just do this 20 go over here do this 20 do this 40 and then and then then go to the studio and seeing that when it happened i was like that's fucking sick that's like as badass as it gets and like i don't know i get it i get excited when i get two in one day but like do, being able to do that type of stuff doesn't happen in a lot of spots i've had a double whammy in downtown fargo before <laughs> like I have, I have a feeling if i really got my shit together like i i would love to do 15 sets in one night at south by type shit like i always thought i would at some point and i'm like ready to do that it's just i want the opportunity to do that there's i'm i'm up here in north dakota where i'm guessing i don't know if it's like the least around the whole country or world but definitely not as opportunistic as it used to be or as it should be i'd be rapping in anywhere so <laughs> and it's that's how i am though i have to make that work that's i mean it's very similar here but i think i i agree to a certain extent but i do think because you say if you had that work ethic because i do think to a certain degree that the work ethic is a product of our environments too i mean yeah. like the midwest and i'm sure like you know, North Dakota is probably similar where it's just like you're in a rural area where the people that live there got, you know, they live there because they work, you know, they yeah. don't live there because they're fucking, you know, it's easy or the opportunity is there all the time. So it's like you kind of get that ingrained in you and not to say there's not lazy fucks here or there, but yeah, and there, I think there's a lot more of that, like where it's just ingrained in people to work hard for what they want and for what they want to do. Um, I don't know what it's like in some of those other cities i would imagine it's probably harder to have that because you're you have easy access to everything i mean i remember when i was growing up if i wanted to and i was fucking 12 or 13 and i wanted to go get fast food or i wanted to go get candy or something i had to bike like 12 miles to the fucking yeah. store and i would you know but then it was yeah. like you fucking did that and you you learned resilience you learned persistence yeah. and shit like that and i don't know i'm sure you learn it from other things in those other areas and stuff and you hone your sword in different different respects but i from the sounds of things and i mean we've had a lot of different people that are in different areas here and a lot of those people have said like aside from new york a lot of the other places are like yeah it used to be really popping it's really slowed down there's still a couple things going on you know and it's like I think a product of that too is like, you got to get lucky. We, you got to have like the combination of all that stuff and get lucky to be in the right place at the right time. You know, it's like yeah. you could be in fucking like Ohio. Like think about like when the weathermen and all those guys were popping off, like the independent scene there was fucking crazy, you know? And it's like, it's and now it's, yeah. it's still, it's still alive, but it's not like that. But yeah. you remember, but you remember what you remember when we were talking about that, uh, uh like how, like, Ohio, Columbus, Cincinnati was like a hub for independent music. I, like when we were talking about that, uh, Grant was on here and he broke down like how basically the extension of that stemmed from New York. Yeah. In, in, in a sense, like the reason those motherfuckers were blown up is because of their networking and connection to Stretch and Bobito and the New York station. I was going to say, what was would, the core that of that? Break, and it that would, would break stretch. people. So like Stretch and Bobito was basically the independent, but yet popping radio show in New York that yeah. would basically break, break hip hop artists. Like, Don't they have Ohio ties though? So, Did they rock out of Cleveland or something? No, 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 no. So, like, Ohio cats would go there. 
Ah, right. They would go to New York and got in with that whole movement. For, yeah. From from what I'm remembering, like when because we had Grant, uh, sh- shouts to Grant Gatsby. When we had Grant Gatsby on here, he he basically broke down the entire tie, um, and basically how uh, Camuteo was basically the one. Like he was the dude that that almost made that entire scene completely blow up, and then he and then really? he passed, and then he passed, and then once that happened, it be it started the decline. Um, I mean, obviously, there's still dope, amazing artists that do shit. I mean, Blueprint's still there, Illogic's still there. Uh, speaking some- of Ill, speaking of Illogic, shouts to him. He's got his uh. Celestial Clockwork 20 year anniversary show coming up around the same time that me and Pestilence are doing this tour. I man, I wish we could be there for that because oh, yeah. that would be crazy. Like that's like one of my favorite illogic records. But I mean, obviously there's still people there. Yeah. It's just the focus has dissipated and it's like not as there anymore. Yeah, they have a lot of okay, so we got Bone Thugs, Kid Cuddy, or like the and then Trippy Red is out of Akron, I'm pretty sure. He's like the most recent Ohio cat that's like on that level of stuff. I might be wrong though. I mean, well, I heard I heard Cleveland is one of the hardest places to do shows. Like I've never played a show in Cleveland ever. And uh um, Yeah, we tried. The, we didn't we didn't succeed. And all the in, <laughs> all the in the all the people that do indie hip hop shit there, they always tell me like these motherfuckers like nobody fucks with each other here like everybody's on their own thing and then like the big people are like they're already rich and they don't give a fuck about nobody else here like it's like weird like yeah. they, like the dude basic the people i know out there basically described it as like being weird and there and it's like how i tell people about milwaukee like people ask to tour milwaukee and i'm like it's like i've said before i'm like are you sure you want to yeah, just step because, properly. Be, because it's like, it's hit or miss here. And that's what all these people tell me. They're like, are you sure you want to play Cleveland? <laughs> you sure about <laughs> that? That's how I felt. Or Tallahassee. I tried to book there and I found out, like, personally, just like, none, nobody fucks with each other. And they don't put shit on at all. Nobody even goes outside. And I was like, damn. Because <laughs> I was going to connect. I had two Florida shows booked on this last run that I did. Now, and, and then I had a, a New Orleans and Lafayette booked, and I wanted to fill the gap. So get Alabama, Mississippi, something, anything. And I was trying to, and it just didn't work out at all. Almost had a couple bites, but it, it the time closed in, and I just couldn't lock it all in. So I ended up doing a pond hopper and just flying after our second show. Um. So now I'm curious, what's your process of – putting the tour together because I've, I've explained my process before I've told people my process. I've given people um, formulas on how to yeah. make it happen. What's your process I mean, to booking a tour? I usually write out the dates and venues of the, the dream come true route that I want for that moment. And then it changes a lot <laughs> by the end of it. Um, Last time, well, like, usually, yeah, I'll put that route down, and then I'll do emails for days or just, like, the local cats and just start sprouting into the ground and then come back, like, every week until I get stuff locked in. Once I get one show locked in, then it makes things really fall into place. Um, They usually um don't come out of randomness, like, me random, randomly, like, emailing a venue, like, hey, this is me type shit like that usually doesn't fall through the way it should when it does though like it's amazing most of the time Uh, a lot of stuff is just through local cats that i know in that way um i feel that usually i secure dates and then i secure the name and then i secure how i'm gonna get to the places and then i secure sponsors within like about like two weeks of the announcement and then i'll I usually, I don't know, I don't always get sponsors, but when I do, um, I try to make sure that they're announced and correctly on the flyers and all that shit. And then I usually get my graphic design guy to make a whole themed 
flyer for the one that has all the dates and then I'll make individual flyers for every date and get talk to all the locals and working with him on that helps me move a lot faster because it's it's a lot of work that I don't have to do and he puts it nicely sectioned into everything so I'm all civilized and whatnot and then uh promo stuff kind of can either happen while the dates are running or I can try to secure something a little before and then um what else can I say yeah that's usually how it goes I try to I try to rock everything three months in advance if if anything so when people try to book something in two weeks from now I'm like are you serious <laughs> and uh <laughs> What other things can I say? I've usually never rented a car. I've usually just like had a friend help me out with like a Suburban or something. I've done that in different type of routes. But um, I've hopped on two different tours where it's like, hey, we have these 11 shows. Do you want to hop on? That That's a blessing, but it's also can get really weird really fast. But it was it was cool when that stuff happened. I wish that would kind of happen again or more often. Like I could hop on a secured thing and help with the components that I can help with and then just rock that way. But it doesn't always end up being that way. Um, like, I don't know. Like I, I booked New York city. We, but we got three shows just by DM and venues and that way it was weird as shit, but like, it, it's always a nice way to kind of keep going and get your name out there and whatnot. So how long, yeah, how, long ago, how long ago was the New York bookings? I'm curious. 2017 uh, i was there over or i was there over the new year i think no it was right before the new year i'm wondering That's if true. i'm wondering if that would even be possible now because now i heard a lot of new york jersey east coast spots uh charge booking fees for people yeah i was hearing that in a couple spots we ended up booking at harlem nights in Harlem and we booked at some, I don't know, some Irish pub in Astoria, Queens. And then we booked some, um, I don't even know, project building in Brooklyn. <laughs> I don't really know how that one really worked out. It was like this squad who put it on. We pull up, we walk up to the apartment building. They're all, all the dudes that are running the show who are like 20. They're all getting searched outside by the house and we're like what the fuck oh, shit. and then as dude's getting searched he's like looking at us and he's like yeah this is the spot guys just go downstairs <laughs> and then we get Damn. down there and they're like yeah they just took our tree and i don't know it seemed solid and it was real. that was like the dopest one there was actually like 60 people in this in this like project building basement and it was fucking dope what were, what were they we called were... you said it was in uh, brooklyn yeah, it was at Star Something. It was like, it was not like a rap group. It was just like a whole bunch of rappers doing this one thing together. Huh. It was, it was cool. Younger cats for sure. Who was the main one? I was there with LIB and Rich Garvey, if y'all know who them, them guys are. They're both out of the cities. Um, what the fuck is that dude's name? There was one dude that was like lit out of new york that was there why Kalik actually was there as well and we ended up like playing with them or not with them but that going to their show in uh harlem nights and that's how we got the show the next day which was interesting as shit harlem's an huh. interesting spot when it comes to like style this they're a lot more popping over there <laughs> yeah i mean i've only ever walked through harlem i never played a show there we uh we randomly I did a radio show in the Bronx, uh, and then we walked from the Bronx into the tip, uh, the tip of like a park in the in fucking Harlem that Grandmaster Cass was doing his park jam at randomly. Oh shit! I I bumped into somebody I knew there. Uh, Ram was actually with me for for that because I was on tour. And I brought Ram with me in um, America's Addiction at the time, uh, who did a couple of tours with me earlier on. But I never stepped foot in the Bronx. I I wish I did. That was the one borough that I did not do anything inside of. Wanted to see the Yankee Stadium, but I did not make it over there. I mean, I've I never. 
I, I've played I played shows and I've been to New York so many times. I've never really explored New York. Yeah. Like I like I walked through. So who, I don't know his name, but who, whoever the guy is that created Central Park, he created a different park. That's in uh, and around Flatbush. Um, and he actually says that that's his. Um, his like main project like central park was just some shit he did for the city but like yeah. this other park is like the main park that he put it all his everything into to designing and shit uh um, so cool. I, I walked through that park i um i saw the fucking giant bull in manhattan i saw the fucking the church shit uh i randomly drove through holland tunnel to get somewhere else I took the ferry, saw the Statue of Liberty from it. Like I've seen all these random things, but I've never like I mean, that's, really. I've never that really seems like most of it. I've never really I, explored though. Like like I I saw I saw some, I saw some dude next to me in a car, getting roadhead, and the, the car ran into a car fucking right next to us. <laughs> And just, no, you you like, New York like, City the like at three like three in the morning type shit like we like it's <laughs> crazy. I have a whole story about it. It's basically, I went to Pumpkinhead's last birthday party show. R.I.P. Pumpkinhead, uh, super dope MC. Um, but I knew Pumpkinhead from Scribble Jam, and I was out there. I believe this was 2015, 2016, something like that. I was out there to shoot a music video uh, with Marquee for a joint that me, Marquee, and Big Noid had. Um, and I was out there to shoot the video. And during the time I was out there, Pumpkinhead had his birthday party show. It got delayed a week. It was supposed to be the week before, but luckily it was when I was there and it was at this spot called Paperbox, which I actually played before because um, Paperbox was one of the venues... Uh, for the Yule Prog, which we did a yearly event there uh, for Uncommon Records. But anyway, that's a whole different thing. But we were there, and all these random people were in there. Like fucking, like Diabolic was there, fucking Pack FM, um, Icon the Mike King. Like all these motherfucking New York legendary motherfuckers are just randomly here. And yeah. then, um, like... They're all just chilling. And like after the shit, we shot a scene in the alleyway because there's like all this graffiti in that area. We shot a scene in the alleyway. And then um, Prime Prolific was there. Right? You know who Prime Prolific is? I've heard that yeah. name and I can see the logo in he my was, head when you say he was, that. <laughs> he was actually a part. He was uh, extra in that video. Um, but he shot that part with me. And then down the street randomly, we hear this yelling. And there's like this dude and this chick just beating each other's ass in the middle of the fucking street at like one, one thirty in the morning, whatever. And then like, we go down there and we say some shit and we're trying to break it up. And then they're like fighting each other and then they're hugging each other and they're fighting each other's all this crazy shit. And then like, after that, we literally left. It's like three in the fucking morning and we're driving and I'm just chilling. I see out of the side, my, my, like the peripheral shit out of the side window and shit. I'm just seeing this shit. There's this car just fucking doing all this weird swervy shit next to me. And this guy <laughs> slaying back looking like he's falling asleep. And then all of a sudden this fucking car just boom right into a fucking parked car. And then you see a chick's head just pop up. And it was oh, the no. fucking funniest shit I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> like three in the morning, dude, dude getting, getting road head fucking smashed into a parked car in fucking New York three in the morning. We tried to. Did you ever see a rat out there? Uh, no. I've seen rats in Chicago, and they're big as fuck there too. Yeah, that shit's weird. Excited, like literally the size of this garbage can was the one that I saw. It was just a huge. It was like a tiny child. That was fucking. We were all smoking outside. We ended up getting getting tree from like the sound lady at one of our shows, and we were all excited about it because none of us smoked in like two days. We all ended up just ripping a bleeze outside in Brooklyn where our Airbnb was and like I had you know like in horror movies where you can't get the key inside of the door and it's like oh no we had that happen because the cop like pulled up and just like hit his lights on us and we I just turned around I was trying to get my shit in there and this rat like ran across while it was going down 
Or no, that was like five minutes before that shit. Either way, that shit was just terrifying. And then I realized that the cop was just fucking with us and walked to a completely different area and laughed at us. And I was like, I hate, I hate all this. <laughs> well, yeah, rats eat good in New York, man. Shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hesses, you, got one anything, one. you got anything for Jance before uh, before we kind of close up here a little bit? Fuck, man. Hey, yeah, I, I was just, just put thinking you on about spot, that. You, you were just talking about rats, and I was thinking about rats, man. And why they're so fat. There's no five second rule in Manhattan, bro. You want to get syphilis if you try to fucking eat the shit off the ground there, man. For real. It's a fucking different it's a different thing. Um I'm trying to think. Y'all have cicadas in Milwaukee? Uh they're not we hear them, but they're not crazy like they are in like like how they were just like infesting like Illinois and Chicago and like lower Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. Like Milwaukee, it wasn't like that. And I don't even know how it is up by you, Pestilence, if they were crazy uh, up there, but. Nah. We had fucking flies and mosquitoes like crazy this year, though. I've never heard one of those in like a 300 mile vicinity of where I'm at. Like when I was in Texas, I heard them and like everyone else acted like they couldn't hear it. And I was like, what is this animal that I'm hearing? They're like, oh, it's a cicada. You got, I didn't even like hear it. And I was like, fuck, that thing's annoying as shit. <laughs> I just I saw a dead cicada on the ground in Iowa this past weekend. Well, it's just... weird because I think it's one of those things where if you like grow up around it and you hear it, it becomes background noise. Yeah, because like where I grew, I grew up in the country, like in fucking Sturgeon Bay, and that was like it was we heard them all the time, and it was just yeah. part of like summertime noise. Like that's just it faded in with the birds and became like a different like ambient noise that was just always happening. Yeah. And now it's like now you yeah, they are annoying as fuck. They're so fucking loud. They're so I guess like, I kind of consciously don't listen to crickets. I'm guessing crickets are like always around me and I just never really like listen to. Y'all have y'all have crickets like we do, don't we? Or don't y'all? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of crickets. And uh fireflies are crazy in in uh early summer days here. At least by That's me. Cool. Like you could look outside. But at least fireflies are cool though. Yeah, like those, they're like the literally, coolest bugs. Literally. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Crickets aren't very cool. They, they you get one little like, better. you get a bunch of crickets. It's fine. You get one cricket in your house. Oh, it's, it's a nightmare. Really it's the annoying. fucking worst. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up, bro. Get yeah. the fuck it's like on. he's asking a question the whole time. Yeah, get the fuck on, man. Yeah, fuck, <laughs> insane. Fuck the crickets. The single crickets. <laughs> fuck that shit. So, what are your what are your plans musically for the next? Like, what's your next? What's your next move? So I'm trying to get another project out by the end of probably like the end of fourth quarter, like December project. And then um, got this run coming up and then I'll be molding. My my plan right now is to work on Memphis to the Carolinas on this next run, which will hopefully be in the April area. It's a very uh, early announcement for such a thing because I barely have it written down. But that's my plan. Memphis, Carolina. On the have, next you ever, have you ever played Memphis? I have not. I just got this one dude who was like, come to Memphis, I got you type shit. It was initially Nashville is where the start was going to be, but now it's Memphis because this guy was like, I can hook it up big time and I'm just going to see if he means what he says. And who is if this? not, I'll start in Nashville. I don't, I don't even really know the dude, but he uh, he mixed India Ari's last album, which I don't know really much about, dude, but once he told me that, I was like, oh, he might be a little something. He does electrical work with my roommate up north and then goes and tours with with whoever he tours with in Memphis when he uh leaves town here. Um yeah, don't even know his name though. <laughs> He's came to my last three shows and like talked to me about it. So um because otherwise I was gonna say uh I know two venues in Memphis, uh Canvas and High Tone. I've played both of those. Um I've actually yeah, I'll played probably, High Tone uh... played High Tone multiple times actually. I'll probably make my way talk. I'll try to regain some information on some stuff at some point here. Maybe if you want to do a couple, we can link some stuff up. I've never played in Nashville either or Atlanta. That's kind of why I'm doing this whole route is because, like, all these places. I've done Louisville before, which will probably be involved. Never been to any of the Carolinas. So, like, this is all very new, and I know it'll be fun because of that in itself. So, fucking hot. Oh, yeah. yeah, hit me Hell up, yeah. man. I could, I could probably link you with some people. Put a word in. I I've played. 
played Carolina spots multiple times. And um, well, not have you done South, ATL. Not, uh, yes, and I know some people out there. Um, and we're actually playing Athens on this upcoming tour, which is like two hours from nice. Atlanta. Um, should be dope. Oh. And uh, and we're playing Asheville. Asheville is one of my favorite places. I I would straight move to Asheville. Asheville is okay. beautiful. And like they Asheville. got this super cool, um, super cool valley that's like all fucking graffitied up, like crazy graffiti shit. And then like inside of all these graffiti areas, there's like restaurants and independent shops and all this shit's fucking dope as fuck. Right. Yeah. yeah like, like, I, like I like Asheville a lot. And you know what's in I'm, Asheville is, um, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. Let me think real quick. Asheville. I'm not even sure where that is. Hold on. Let me. It's Georgia? No, no. North, North Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina. Word. Um, let me just double check this before I say it out loud because I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, there, um, we played, uh, what is it called? St. Augustine on that last one. And like, it's still worthy to like, oh, St. Augustine's dope. Those. I played St. Yeah, Augustine. it was dope. Yeah, it's dope. And then like, Jacksonville is also an option, but like I don't know if I want to bleed into Florida just because I've already done it type of thing. So hopefully I can build on some other stuff. So yeah, uh, well yeah, like I said, hit me, man, because you know I I fuck with your shit and we're cool like that. Um, but I yeah, was yeah. right. I was right. So you're younger than me, but have you ever seen the movie Richie Rich? I think so. Like uh, with, uh, Eddie... It's like Macaulay Culkin, Macaulay like Culkin. Little rich, oh, no, little rich kid or whatever Rich boy yeah. So there's a gigantic mansion in there That they live in Um, It's called The the Biltmore Estate And that's actually in Asheville You can't okay. take a You can't like You have to actually pay To fucking go deep back in this area Just to take a picture in front of it I've never done it And I would never do it But like uh, But like that fucking gigantic mansion is there. And I heard like, uh, I met this random dude in Tulsa that said his fucking, he was from Alaska and he said his wife is from Asheville. And one year they went out to Asheville for like Christmas time and you can fucking rent out the fucking Biltmore estate and stay there as an Airbnb during Christmas and shit. Oh, nice! That'd be dope. Crazy, probably insane. I'll just, do that. I'll just put on a show there, doing that. I'll just rent it like an Airbnb and just have people pull up and I'll rap. <laughs> it's yeah, message Macaulay Culkin, dude. Get Macaulay Culkin to show up. He'll fucking bring an entourage. The crazy yeah. thing about it that never made sense to me is the road leading to it is surrounded by fucking bamboo. Nice. That's, <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. I'm I'm getting mad shining film vibes from this, but it's not where they film shining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I never been there. I never been there either, man. And I always wanted to pull up because I've I've been to Colorado and I know it's yeah. in Colorado, but I've never dipped off to the actual shining hotel. I guess there's two locations. There's one near Hood River that's in Oregon. Like they use two different buildings to mm. do it. And I I guess I was like hella near the the first one, and then yeah the other ones in in Colorado I think it's uh oh it starts with a B Breckenridge I think it's in Breckenridge like area I might be completely wrong though hmm. that shit's that documentary about The Shining really opened my brain has to how many different directions he really took that shit into it's just like a giant metaphor for like the genocide of Native people and I was like that is deep for a horror movie. <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever heard that one. Like I've never, before, but... I've never seen that, but I love Stanley Kubrick. I loved yeah. Stanley Kubrick. All his movies were dope to me. Um, Super in depth stuff. It's fucking badass. He's actually one of the first. Uh, I remember when we were studying film. He's one of the first people that did one of the longest continue continuous shots. Oh yeah, um, in film. Like back in the day, I mean, obviously it was probably way different now, but he he did one of the longest continuous shots. I, I 
and I think one that competes with it is uh um uh Quentin Tarantino on the uh, is he no, the no, that, no, that, there's a there's a part there's a part in um in Boogie Nights where ah. they walk where they walk through the fucking mansion like like dudes fucking uh I can't even remember the motherfuckers names in that but um where they're walking through the whole fucking dude's crib or whatever and walking up and down and go it's like a, a straight long continuous shot and I think that was the one that beat as far as time wise like Stanley Kubrick's first continuous shot or some shit some 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 crazy shit like that wonder what do you know how long like do you have a guess at how long that was I don't remember. that I don't remember wish I could look it up as I'm rolling here but I can't <laughs> but um but yeah man uh well hopefully uh I'm able to get this maybe this debut show set up for November 1st but if not November 2nd for the people that check this uh cuz this will be out Oshkosh, before baby. this will be out before then Jance will be playing the Oshkosh show at Reptile Palace November 2nd uh, I believe it is me pestilence right you are rocking that yeah. me pestilence uh the homie stream of consciousness um and jance I believe. Well, yeah it'll be my first time rocking the stage in Oshkosh, so I'm pumped can be tight yeah we love we love playing that it's the best place yeah, it's the best place uh, yeah. yeah so that should be fun uh college will still be in uh it's before the break for Thanksgiving. So yeah. It should be dope. Perfect. Saturday. Be right show. around the time those Jordan threes are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're pretty sure sh- pretty sure. They got cement threes coming out on Black Friday, I'm pretty sure. This will be the first time in like like ten years that, or no, I might be wrong. First time in like four years that they've got these coming out. It's one of those riot shoes. <laughs> uh, that's uh, well I <laughs> So you're a sneakerhead. Yeah, I'd be knowing shit. I mean, I I was a more foundationalized one back in the day. Now I just got I just got too much knowledge on shit now. <laughs> I like to know about like the main ones that be coming out retro wise, like threes, twelves, and fours. But new balance be slapping lately, and that's usually the shit that I'll be rocking right now. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um well yeah, man. This is this has been dope, man, having you on talking about your new album, uh, drop one more time that title where people could check it out right now, and then also drop your socials that you're most active on that people can get a hold of you. So, uh, when in doubt came out September 10th, 2024. That's my new album by Jansonia, J A N T Z O N I A, on absolutely everything, I think. Pretty pretty solidified on everything. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh yeah. Again, this has been dope, man. Um, like I said, hopefully we can get this Dubuque show locked in, but otherwise we will be playing Oshkos together. That is November second, Reptile Palace. Make sure you keep that date in because Jans will be in the Wisconsin area for that. Um Hell yeah. and yeah, this appreciate has been... y'all for having me around here and I'm glad I got to figure out all this Zoom stuff and I will be able to do this in the future. And I'm pumped to w- see y'all in Wisconsin in the next, uh, how long do we got here? We got like a month before I got to pull that up. So yeah, got that locked in. I'm going to see y'all soon. Yeah, man. Super dope, man. Um, yeah, this is the De- the Cypher Den Chat podcast in association with the Denku podcast. I'm your host, Tayamu Denku. That's my homie Pestilence. Showed up a little late, but He's still in here, in the building, in the place to be. And mm-hmm. tonight we we had special guest from North Dakota, Grand Forks, but now living in Fargo. The homie Jansonia, Zen people, um, all that goodness. He's got his new album out. Make sure you check that. Uh, this has been brought to you by Cypher Den Music, where we inspire even those higher. And remember to never stop chasing your dreams because you will never know what you are fully capable of. Oh, and that's how we end every episode. Pestilence probably knows it by heart. I still have to read it off the motherfucking pad, but it is what it is. 
Um, doesn't even matter, man. You know what it, you know what I'm saying? But yes, again, Chance, we appreciate you, man. Thank you for appreciate being part y'all of the Cypher Den Chat Podcast. Pestilence, I'll right, catch you, you later. And we are out of here, everybody. Peace. Peace. Peace.